do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Fraud or Oz here, and I'm going to uh, be reading to you today from Libra Left, the Book of Wisdom and Folly. Uh, I'm just going to read uh, the first few sections. Uh, I'll probably be putting uh, more in from this book because this is a really great book. Uh, Libra Left. The Book of Wisdom or Folly, in the form of an epistle of 666, the great wild beast, to his son, 777. Uh, the first section here is Apologia. And it says, I have begotten thee, O my son, and that strangely, as thou knowest, upon the scarlet woman called Hilarion, as it was mysteriously foretold unto me in the Book of the Law. Now, therefore, that thou art come to the age of understanding, do thou give ear unto my wisdom, for that therein lieth a simple and direct way for every man, that he may attain to the end. Firstly, then, I would have thee to know that spiritual experience and perfection have no necessary connection with advancement in our holy order. But for each man is a path. There is a constant and there is a variable. Seek ever, therefore, in thy work of the promulgation of the law to discover in each man his own true nature. For in each man his inmost light is the core of his star, that is, Hadith, and his work is the identification of himself with that light. It is not every man who is called to the sublime task of the AA, wherein he must master thoroughly every detail of the great work, so that he may in due season accomplish it not only for himself, but for all who are bound unto him. There are very many for whom in their present incarnations this great work may be impossible, since their appointed work may be in satisfaction of some magical debt, or in adjustment of some balance, or in fulfillment of some defect as is written, sum quique. Now, because thou art the child of my bowels, I yearn greatly towards thee, O my son, and I strive strongly with my spirit, that by my wisdom I may make plain thy way before thee. And thus in many chapters will I write for thee those things that may profit thee. See Benedictus. De Art Kabbalistica On the Art of the Kabbalah do thou study most constantly, my son, in the art of the Holy Kabbalah. Know that therein the relations between numbers, though they be mighty in power and prodigal of knowledge, are but lesser things. For the work is to reduce all other conceptions to these of number, because thus thou wilt lay bare the very structure of thy mind, whose rule is necessity rather than prejudice. Not until the universe is thus laid naked before thee canst thou truly anatomize it, the tendencies of thy mind lie deeper far than any thought, for they are the conditions and the laws of thought, and it is these that thou must bring to naught. This way is most sure, most sacred, and the enemies thereof most awful, most sublime. It is for the great souls to enter on this rigor and austerity. To them the gods themselves do homage, for it is the way of utmost purity. and Divida Corrigenda, on the corrected life. Know, son, that the true principle of self-control is liberty. For we are born into a world which is in bondage to ideals. To them we are perforce fitted, even as his enemies to the bed of Procrustus. Each of us, as he groweth, learns repression of himself in his true will. It is a lie, this folly against self. These words are written in the book of the law. So therefore those passions in ourselves which we understand to be hindrances are nor art nor part of our true will, but diseased appetites manifest in us through false early training. Thus the taboos of savage tribes in such a matter as love constrain that true love which is born in us, and by this constraint come ills of body and mind. Either the force of repression carries it and creates neuroses and insanities, or the revolt against that force, breaking forth with violence, involves excesses and extravagances. All these things are disorders and against nature. Now then learn of me the testimony of history and literature as a great scroll of learning. But the vellum of the scroll is of man's skin and its ink of his heart's blood. Legenda 
De Amore, Fables of Love. The fault that is fatality in love, as in every other form of will, is impurity. It is not the spontaneity thereof which worketh woe, but some repression in the environment. In the fable of Adam and Eve is this great lesson taught by the masters of the Holy Kabbalah. For love were to them the eternal Eden, save for the repression signified by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Thus their nature of love was perfect. It was their fall from that innocence which drove them from the garden. In the love of Romeo and Juliet was no flaw but family feud, which imported nothing to that love was its bane. And the rashness and violence of their revolt against that repression slew them. In the pure outrush of natural love and desmo Desdemona, for Othello was no flaw, but in his love was married by his consciousness of his age and his race, of the prejudices of his fellows and of his own experience of woman frailty. Gesta de Amore, of the History of Love. Now as literature overfloweth with the murders of love, so also doth history and the lesson is ever the same. Thus the loves of Abelard and Eloise were destroyed by the system of repression in which they chanced to move. Thus Beatrice was robbed of Dante by social artificialities, and Paolo slain on account of things external to his love of Francesca. Then, per contra, Martin Luther, being a giant of will, and also the eighth Henry of England as a mighty king, bent them to overturn the whole world that they might have satisfaction of their loves. And who shall follow them? For even now we find great churchmen, statesmen, princes, drama makers, and many lesser men overwhelmed utterly and ruined by the conflict between their passions and the society about them, wherein which party errs is no matter of the moment for our thought. But the existence of that war is evidence of wrong done to nature. Ultima Thesis De Amore a final thesis on love. Therefore, O my son, be thou wary not bowing before the false idols and ideals, yet not flaming forth in fury against them, unless that be thy will. But in this matter be prudent and silent, discerning subtly and with acumen the nature of the will within thee, so that thou mistake not fear for chastity, or anger for courage. And since the fetters are old and heavy, and thy limbs withered and distorted by reason of their compulsion, do thou, having broken them, walk gently for a little while, until the ancient elasticity return, so that thou mayest walk, run, and leap naturally and with rejoicing. Also, since these fetters are as a bond almost universal, be instant to declare the law of liberty, and the full knowledge of all truth that appertaineth to this matter. For if in this only thou overcome, then shall all earth be free, taking its pleasure in sunlight without fear or frenzy. Amen. Love is the law, love under will.